this was my vat of acid moment. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Late Night with... Oh. Ha. Wait. <laughs> I was just saying that as like a little joke, but then I realized I was like full on theft of Dylan because I was like Late Night with Trin because it's so dark. But then I realized like Dylan has a whole segment where it's like Late Night with Dylan. Sorry, Dylan. Recently, one of my favorite movies ever got put on Netflix or the USA Netflix, and I have been dying to watch it with you guys for so long. It is a movie called Duff. You guys have probably heard of Duff. It was a book turned movie adaptation, and it came out in 2015. It stars Mae Whitman, which you've probably seen her in a bunch of things. She was in Perks of Being a Wallflower. Scott Pilgrim, um, she does a lot of voice acting. She's amazing. I love her. This movie has got to be one of my favorite movies. I remember loving it so much when it came out. I think a lot of movies movies um, try to do this comedy teen genre and they usually fail miserably. Duff is one of the few comedy teen movies that I literally laugh out loud because I think it's so funny and I made everyone watch it when it came out. And it's out on Netflix now so go watch it. We're gonna be diving into why I love Duff so much today. Let's get into it. I would bang her so hard we'd both need helmets. I love her. I love her. Like I've literally watched her in so many different things. Like I was I was literally obsessed with her when she was in The Nine Lives of Chloe King. King so sad it got canceled. And then she then she was in Scream Queens and it was just it was so sad for her because I heard she got like harassed harassed after being on Scream Queens because I'll just have a normal plain black coffee. Not all that, you know, sugary pumpkin spice whatever. And he goes I think I'm in love. So now every single time I see her, I only see that character and I feel so bad because like, I feel like she's like just such a, like she's a cute little actress and like she's fine. Like I don't think there's anything wrong with her, but every single time I see her, I'm just like, you are so annoying, but she's not. It's just one scene. It's literally one scene. Guys, I don't see Toby. I don't know where Toby- Let's not act like they don't look insane as well. Like they always look at her like she's like crazy for not dancing and they look insane. Body pooper. Oh, get a little of this guy. Can't think of anyone that I would want to stay away from more than that little doofus. I know I said he was attractive, but oh my god. I wouldn't stay so far away from anyone who's playing guitar at a party. Duff, D-U-F-F, -F. designated ugly fat friend. It's not like a big deal, okay? I mean, like every group of friends has one, you know, the one who doesn't look as good, thus making their friends look better, the one who's who's approachable and, and easy to talk to because no one's trying to get in their pants. And if you don't know who it is, chances are it's you. That's me. I don't know who it is, so it must be me. He was kind of an ass. Like he was kind of like not really just like just an ass. Like he was like a big, big ass. Like a big fatty juicy ass. But like, I don't mean that in a good way. But a big fatty juicy ass is good, but he's awful. Good talk, you know what? Get back out there, have some- What the hell was that for? You just have to be so stupid to say what the hell it was that for. Also, not to mention, no one says Duff. When I was 12 years old, I thought Duff was going to be such a frequently used term in my life when I got older. I thought everybody in high school would have been calling everybody, everybody Duffs. I literally thought it was going to be such a useful thing to know. No one says that. It, it's just like, no, I've never heard that phrase outside of this goddamn movie and the book. Or when people are referencing this goddamn movie or the book. And I thought it was gonna be literally the most like pivotal phrase ever used. Like I literally thought everyone was gonna be using that shit. It's sad to have that type of knowledge and not be able to use it. You know in Batman when that guy falls into the vat of acid and becomes the Joker? This was my vat of acid moment. My she... best friends. What? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. That was kind of ahead of its time. This was my vat of acid moment. She literally just said that she was having a Joker moment. She was having a Joker origin moment. 
And I think that is so ahead of its time. I think it's like kind of brilliant. I think it's kind of epic. And I love it that this movie was so ahead of its time before the Joker jokes became so prevalent in society. You know, ha have fun playing intramural Wii golf this season. <laughs> that is such okay, a funny okay, joke. Okay, okay. <laughs> that is actually very funny. Like, I feel like if you're watching this, like, the first couple times you only see like the big bum bum jokes. But like these little like slight things she says are so funny. Like how how do they think of this stuff like that? Like who are the writers? Who are they? Kind of reminds me of Glee. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to ever compare anything to Glee, but this does remind me of Glee. This is what you look like when you're not overthinking things. Actually having some fun. That was him basically saying that he loves her. That was literally him basically saying he loved her and he loved everything about her and he loved it when she's having fun. If anybody ever sees this. I'll rip your nutsack off. Here we go. Yeah. I like how she's like, don't let anyone see that. As she's in a public store doing this in public. Like they're not in a private dressing room at all. This was just a campaign to show that love culture has the ugliest shit. Like this was not a good look for love culture. Imagine doing that. Like, okay, this scene gives me so much secondhand embarrassment. Like I know it's supposed to be funny, but I'm getting so much secondhand embarrassment. Unbelievably inappropriate. It's literally <laughs> there are some scenes. I don't know why Mae Whitman stars in some of the most secondhand embarrassment filled scenes, but she does. Not only did I feel immense secondhand embarrassment in that scene in Perks being a wallflower where he kisses the prettiest girl in the room and he doesn't kiss his own girlfriend. That is just literally like so it makes me want to throw up. It makes me want to throw up how bad it is. Like and this scene, like Honestly, if I was with her, I'd be cracking up. I'd literally be giggling so much because I think that's so funny. But watching it and knowing what happens, it literally makes me so... Ugh, like, it makes me, like... You know, like, when a foil ball, like, when you crunch up a foil ball? That's how my body feels when I watch this scene. Because it's so uncomfortable. Because it makes me so embarrassed. She's not okay with it being released to, like, online. Which I get. But she's completely fine with doing it in a public store. She is having a mannequin feel her up in this store and she is completely confident about it. She thinks it's hilarious, which it is. But what changed? What changed, my lady? What changed? Yep, make it go away. Ah. Oh, that's very bad. Step three, okay? Smile more. You're really cute when you're having fun. You're really cute when you're having fun is I love you in three different languages. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. She looks just like me. By that, I mean the mannequin. Like, I kind of look like the mannequin, right? <laughs> that mannequin looks just like me. Step five, take a few hits. They're using... They're using every single goddamn song from every other teen movie. We have boom, boom, boom. From The Fault in Our Stars. And, and, and... We have Sexy Silk from Easy A. I'll be your pussy cat licking your milk right now. Down, 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 down. Don't ask me why I memorized those very, very sexual lyrics about licking a pussy cat. <laughs> Don't ask me why. Why are they just using every single song from every other team? Movie. Uh, the seat taken. Oh, you're busy. <laughs> Back. The scene. The scene. The scene. The scene. The scene is everything everyone loved about the she's the man scene where she tries to figure out male body language. It's the same thing. I think we need to have more movies and more um teen movies specifically when we get into this chick flick um teen comedy genre of movies where we start bringing back the greatness of others and full-on just start doing the same thing because at this point we're gonna have a whole generation that grows up without them and that's gonna be devastating right now i can't think of a teen chick flick coming of age movie that came out in the past five years that might have resembled the greatness of clueless she's the man 10 things i hate about you like i'm not really feeling it like what are these kids having to grow up with nowadays 
after oh god oh no we're literally there's no hope for anyone if that's if that's all they have i can't even i can't even think of anything wait their mascot is the blue devils reminds me of vza blue devils or the woodchucks <laughs> I just have to say the editing probably took a really long time. No, because this is like awful. Because she thought the first one was her Joker moment. This is a real Joker moment. I think it would have been funny if she thought that everyone was laughing at her. If she thought everyone was laughing at her and there was like two people. Like it wasn't that many people because like we exaggerate things in our mind. You know in like Meet the Robinson where he's like, everyone hated me. And they're like, hey Goob, want to come over to my house later? <laughs> I wish it was kind of like that because I feel like we we need to kind of have that exaggeration shown in media, you know? Everyone hates me and everyone thinks I'm so false. Everyone making fun of me. It's like two people. Oh my. I like how she's like, shut the site down now. And she's like doing it from a school computer. Like, I just don't feel like you can do that. Like, I feel like... No way they have a VPN. No way they have a VPN on that school computer. She's not gonna be able to shut nothing down. Toby. Oh, Toby. You're gonna do anything. My special little Toby, aren't you? I can take you home with me. <laughs> my man bag. Oh. <laughs> Boobs look good, new bra. Ooh. Thanks a lot. He's just the worst. Like, he is the worst. He is the worst. I, got, I have to say this. I have to say this. I have to say this. Farewell. I love scenes like that. I love it when they're like, aren't you gonna defend me? And then they're like, ew. It's not that I like it when people betray someone's trust and don't defend them in public, but I like the retaliation afterwards where the person who just got hurt like does something to them. Whether it's like Bianca just did, she, she flung the food on him. Or if it's like, some, they, they like punch him or something. Like I think that is, that is everything. I love that. I love that scene in probably anything I've ever watched. Well, you're not the only one running around punching people today. No one else sees that video. Tell everyone. I don't know that many people. Then well, make, make some, some more, more friends, friends and, and tell them. them. That's what I like to see in a movie. I love to see that. Knight in shining armor. Knight in shining armor. I know no one likes a damsel in distress and we've grown past that. I still like it. Sorry. Second to talk to a fan. Yeah, sure. What's up? Yeah, yeah sure. sure what's, what's up? up? I almost did that with my hair, but I didn't want to mess up my bangs. Okay, uh, I'm thinking something kind of trendy, you know, kind of hipster, uh, maybe unique. Done. Dave and Buster's. Dave and Buster's is a really good date topic. I have been, guys, okay, I know this has nothing to do with the movie. This is not a commentary on the movie, but it is a side fact that I have to talk about. Dave and Buster's. The mention of Dave and Buster's. Let's talk about it. I have been wanting to go to Dave and Buster's for like two years now, and I have not been. Not because Dave and Buster's is so out of the way. There's literally one 15 minutes from my house, and I never go, and I've wanted to go for so long, and no one will freaking go with me. Every single time I bring up Dave and Buster's, everyone's like, mm -hmm. like everyone's kind of like literally like like trying very nicely to tell me no and i'm just waiting for someone to be like yes let's go to dave and busters i'm literally waiting for someone to finally be like yes dave and busters because i want to go so bad and i haven't been two years because i don't want to go by myself because out of all the places that i can go to by myself dave and busters is not the place that i'm going to take on by myself not it feels like that's very thing to do i don't want to do it i'm not basically anywhere else by myself i'm not restaurant by myself i'll eat by myself i'll go to stores by myself i'll do all this stuff by myself i'll make so by myself i don't know why it feels like i'm not i will not i'll go to move them later i've been i've been talking about this for two years i don't know why it feels like a weird I need years, and I haven't been. Needs 15, 15 minutes later from my mind. I've been talking about searching for two uh, years. It's two years. I haven't been. 15 minutes from my mind. Never. And why can't go. we Please. just all please? Why can't they? Why can't they? Play. Anyways, back to the movie. Is he sitting close? I don't know. The way. And then it's all about interaction. Does he? Now I feel like I've witnessed people in this where they're leaning in and they're scooting close. I feel like I've seen a lot more flirting in real life than I realize. And now I think, I now I think that people have flirted with me and I just didn't realize after watching that scene, leaning in, scooting close, talking when they lean, like leaning in when they talk. Like I feel like now I realized I've, I'm having a big red pill moment right now. Simon, get your finger out of there. You're not my father. Yes, I am your daddy, Simon. <laughs> Yes, I am your daddy, Simon. And little did we know that was Simon from Love, Simon, the ultimate book adaptation movie that came out in 2018. Every single teen movie exists in Duff. 
the Duff universe, if we've ever seen it. The multi-universe. This scene is what made me believe in love. I think it is the most romantic scene I've ever seen. This scene outdoes the notebook by literally so much. Like, notebook. Duff. It's okay. It's not okay. But it will be. I promise. This is literally so wonderful. <gasps> that is literally, oh my god, such a good kiss scene, by the way. What, um... That. You what know you... what? That, that was, uh, that was practice. I just, I know we get set up with the that was practice right after, but I have to say that was why, let's talk about why I like that scene. It is because... I literally feel like I'm hosting a radio show right now. I like it because the way we set up the shot on the rock with the beautiful green behind them and they both wearing blue and it contrasts very well with the green because the green is a little bit more yellow. It's a little bit more of a yellow green. This color palette right here works very well. It's very visually pleasing. It's very bright. It's not too saturated, but it's still bright and engages your eyes. I also love the kiss. I love how it stems from such a natural progression through the movie. They haven't had any romantic points throughout this movie. It doesn't seem super cliche. There's not a lot of emotional music in the background to build it up to the kiss. There's not a bunch of ooh, ah. It's very much what it is. Kind of more raw, if you will. I know I'm doing a very big deep dive into this Duff kiss scene, but I really like it. It's one of my favorite kiss scenes, first kiss scenes in movies that I've seen, especially teen movies. And that really good cutoff of the its practice is such a good contrast. I like it. I like it that it sticks on theme for the rest of the movie that even though it's, ah, it's a kiss, ah, ooh, ah, they cut it right off with that, with that little joke. And I think it just lines up super well. It's one of my favorite kiss scenes in a teen coming of age story. It's so good to me. Wow, you really dressed up. Oh. That's the last thing I'd ever want to be told to me. Like, if anyone, if I came anywhere and someone went, you really got dressed up, Ki killing myself, like literally killing myself. Like that's, if you're not gonna say, oh my God, you look so amazing, beautiful, stunning. Oh, go kill yourself if you say that to anyone. What? Oh. <laughs> Let there be light, right? Yeah, from the Bible. <laughs> Another Bible reference. I know he's a Bible boy for sure. He is a Bible boy for sure with that little guitar. He is for sure a Bible boy. My heart's desire. He is such a Christian guitar boy. He is literally about to sing some Bible songs. I know she talked about her Joker moment in the beginning of the movie, but like, come on, this is a Joker moment if I've ever seen it. Not as a Motel 6, Wes. You were on a date with... Toby. That's not the point. No, of course I would be mad. Okay, regardless of whether there is jealousy wrapped into it, there is some um, validity into what she's saying about being mad that he went to the, to her think rock that she shared with him with somebody else. It was also someone who was like so mean to her like on like the daily. So like I feel like she is in the like it, there's it's not just like oh my god I'm jealous which like she a little bit is. But why would you do that? She's so right. This was an experiment and it worked for you and it didn't work for me. So let's just forget it, okay? That was such a good scene. Literally the first time I watched it, I was like so emotionally invested and I was kind of like about to start crying because she's a really good actress. Oh, people like you don't hang out with people like me. Favorite scene, I love it. I've seen it in so many, so many goddamn different movies and TV shows and books, but I fucking love it. I fucking love it. It's the best thing ever. Best shit to me. And that line, this was an experiment and it worked for you, but it didn't work for me. Oh, juicy, juicy, lovely. I love that so much. So all of this because of some word. That's such a fucking rude thing to say. All of this because of some word. Like girl, you know it's not a word. It's not just a word. No, oh, no, she's right, B. You are by far the smartest one of the three of us. You're loyal, you're funny. But tell me this, why was I not the third angel and Charlie's angel? Why'd you do that to me? Why did you do me dirty like that? Because that still needs to be addressed. The look, the look! 
think. Power move. They, they said, girl, you're going in the center. Okay, you know what? I take it back. back. Her dress looks better than both of theirs. Because th their dresses look the same. I like Casey's. I don't like Jess's, which is weird because she's a fashion girl. Bianca, not the others. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> so is everybody. There's always gonna be somebody I hate this. prettier, more talented, or richer than you. I hate it. I hate it. I love I love that she's having this moment in her life where she's like the realization, but I hate I hate it when they go up to Mingra and they're like, you know what? You're really fucking mean. But you know what? I feel bad for you. I actually pity you. Because you're just so insecure. You try to put up this guard and try to stomp on everyone down below you so you can feel better about yourself. And really, at the end of the day, I feel bad for you. And then she turns off and she walks away. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, personally, if I was a really mean girl and someone said that to me, I'd be like, Ugh. okay. Don't tear me down for not giving a shit about your labels because in the end, they're meaningless. That one, that, that one, I, I can't get down. It's so cheesy. Don't tear me down for not giving a shit about labels because at the end of the day, they're meaningless. I will kill you. I will literally kill you. I will cut your knees and pull your teeth out. It's so cheesy to me and I love cheese. I'm a big cheesy girl. Like I love a little fondue moment. I love everything in a movie soaked with cheese. I love it. I love cheesy moments. But that one, it makes me cringe because it seems so anti-bully PSA commercial. Like it matters to you. And I support that. I really do. But don't get down on me because I don't give a shit about them. Ah, I'm literally going to kill you. I don't know why I hate it so much. I just wish she was just like, you can go suck a fat dick and leave. Like, I literally wish that's how the scene went. Mr. Wesley Rush. I'm ready. Are you guys ready? This is the, this is the moment, y'all. Aren't you going to go get your crown? No. I'm going to get the girl. That is such a cute line, by the way. Like, let's talk about that line because it's so nonchalant. It's so cool. It's so, it's so, oh, I love it. I'm going to go get the girl. I can't deal with it. I can't deal with it. It's so cute. Imagine just leaving the dance. They just got there. They literally just got there. It all started senior year. They're so cute. They're so cute. Like, what am I supposed to say about that? Because they just have such good chemistry. They built it up so well throughout the movie. It was a good slow burn. I love it. I love it. Hey, neighbor slash boyfriend. Hi, neighbor slash girlfriend. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That was really cheesy, but that was one. That one was really cute. Hey, neighbor slash boyfriend. Hey, neighbor slash girlfriend. It's so cute. Maybe we'll accidentally touch knees. Oh, can I? This is my favorite movie ever. This is my favorite movie ever. I'm gonna get the girl. Guys, let's talk about that fantastic ass movie. That is literally such a good movie. I think it is such a fun, lighthearted movie, um, but it's also just like clever. I think it's a very clever movie. I think it's very funny. It's one of the few teen movies that has come out recently that I recently came out in 2015 that I actually find super funny and I laugh every single time I watch it. It reminds me majorly of Easy A, especially with those Easy A references, Blue Devils and the freaking song. Like it's literally like Easy A's little cousin. I love that. Follow me on social medias. All of them will be linked in the description box down below. And you guys can also subscribe so you can see more videos from me and turn on the notifications bell as well if you wanna be the first one to see my videos when they come out. I respond to comments in the first couple hours of it being posted. So make sure you guys turn on the notifications bell so you guys can talk with me so you can chat with me share this video with your friends if you liked it leave down comments about the next movies you guys want me to talk about and i will see you guys next time bye